Asian countries and athletes of Asian descent are dominating the Olympics right now, but some believe that perhaps they're still being cheated out of some more wins. Of course, uh, they can win a gold medal if they are playing like badminton or they are playing ping pong, but uh, for basketball, ho, 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 no, 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 we've got to put a stop to that. Oh, David, you had to hit him with the French accent, and it's only because we think, or a lot of people think that the French cheated in the men's basketball game. Right, right, right. Because, uh, Andrew, they're saying that uh, Roy Hachimura was basically ejected from the game unfairly, and there was a controversial three point, uh, four-point play at the end of the game between France's national team and Japan's national team. Woo, guys. Well, we're going to give you our Olympic update and our thoughts on the Olympics in general. And will Asians keep dominating Olympic sports? I think there's reason to believe so. So please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. But one day, hopefully this smala sauce will dominate the pourable chili oil market. Uh, yeah. Um, Andrew, it was potentially going to be the biggest Olympic basketball upset of all time in modern era. Guys, so basically the France and Japan men's basketball game goes down to the wire. And yes, Roy Hachimura has been fouled out already on some questionable calls. But the most questionable thing truly is that this guy, Matthew Strazel, hits a three-pointer on the Japanese player Yuki Kawamura, who was killing it all game. Five threes. Yeah, six threes. He hits yeah. six out of 15 threes for the game. And they're, they're keeping it close. And basically, visibly, there is no contact on this play. Or... Very little contact. Yeah, you could say I had to take a look at like seven replays. His hand may be on Stratzel's hip the tiniest bit. It like looks like it may have brushed his like hip. Like grazing his hip. Anyways, listen, if that's the foul call, obviously a lot of people are like, dude, I don't think they should have called that. It kind of gave France the upper hand. Then it basically tied the game, and then France went on to win in overtime. Of, of course, Victor Wembanyama went ham in overtime. Right, right, right. Um, which... which now, typically the France team is pretty good, so they should have been up on the Japan team much, much more. But like we said, this was going to be an insane upset. Right, right, right. Because obviously on France, they have a ton of NBA players. They have Wembenyama, who some people consider he may become the next Hall of Fame player in the NBA. I'll say this, though. To be fair, Andrew, I do think that uh, the host country does often get the benefit of the doubt. Roy Jones Jr. is famous for losing a gold medal boxing match in Seoul, Korea, the year that Seoul was hosting the Olympics. Right, and uh, that was uh, considered a very, very controversial decision. Because right. Roy Jones Jr. was like one of the best boxers in the world at that time. It happens. I mean, uh, it, some people were accusing it happening uh, in China when, whenever the, the Winter Olympics or the Beijing Olympics were held as well. Right. Now, David, do you think it is it fair that the home country gets a little bit of a bump and the, gets those superstar calls? Or is it just what happens and it shouldn't be that way? Or as the host country, they do deserve almost some of the superstar calls. I mean, if you look at the spirit of sport, they sh it shouldn't happen, right? Right, it should not. But almost inevitably, there's so much uh, financially and there's so much geopolitically wrapped up in it. On a 50-50, they're going to get the call. Right, right. And I'm, not, I'm assuming that that call in the men's basketball game at the end, it was so close that to them it was yeah. a 50-50. Yeah, I think looking back on it, I think the Rui Hachimura ejection is almost more objectionable because if Kawamura has his hand slightly on his hip, I could maybe see that. But I don't even know if they were calling the, the foul off the hand on the hip. They were more calling it on the, the body contact. Yeah, no, there was definitely not a lot of body contact on that. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, the refs called it, and there is no, like, replay or, like, right. challenge button in FIBA, I believe. So, not like the NBA. It would have been the greatest Asian basketball win in the Olympics. Man, ever. I wish they won it. Oh, man, that would have been cool. But uh, uh, Moving yeah. on to a, an in instance, Andrew, where the Asian did get the gold medal, but the European country is protesting. We got to go uh, talk about um, the Hong Kong fencer, Edgar Chung. Edgar Chung. So Hong Kong is actually a fencing powerhouse, I guess, to no surprise. Uh, well, I think we uh, Hong Kong people learned it from the British. Right. And then they got really, really good at it. Maybe, I don't know, did the British stop studying fencing after that? Yeah, so basically the Italian delegation or federation is 
appealing this win because they believe that the referees in the fencing match, and the referees are from Asia, but not Hong Kong, they're from Taiwan and Korea, that the Italian team is arguing, hey, those refs had some bias towards the Hong Kong team. Yeah, they were also Chinese, eh? They were the Mongoloid, the Chinese. Well, you know, uh, Italian people, I'm sorry. I have to tell you that, you know, Hong Kong is not the same as Taiwan. And it's not the same as Korea. In fact, even though we are just all Asian and have straight black hair, other than that, we don't really know each other. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, some people are saying it's funny because the Italians are almost accusing the refs of favoritism or racism. But a lot of people are saying the Italians might be actually racist for accusing them in the first place. Yeah, yeah. So I guess, you know, I'm not saying that Asians don't ever cheat, but I don't think that this is the instance. And I don't think it's a strong argument. Even the fencer himself who lost... Machi, the, the yeah. Italian fencer who lost by one point to Edgar, he said, you know, I have to accept the referee call. We always accept it. You know, I accept the result. Right. So he's accepting and it. And he was actually up 14-12, and he had a lot of chances to close, uh, close it out. Yeah. So um, You know what's interesting enough, Andrew, is that a lot of Asians play old world, like Western sports that the Western world has sort of like moved on from. Right, like fencing. I want to say badminton. These are... Pardon, I think I believe heavily British or European sports in in origin. Yes, in origin. But now most of the dominant players hail from Asia. Right, right, right. And uh, I think that that's also partially why the medal counts for all the Asian countries are so high. Bro, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, and obviously there's like the mainstream big sports, which are like men's basketball. That was a big one. That's why if Japan actually got to upset France, that would have been insane. That would have been very, especially with the... Because, uh, yeah, those are sports that traditionally Asians have not had a lot of success Dude, in. Dude, Yuki right? is like five foot seven. He's five foot seven and he was tearing up the, the French team and they have like two seven four guys, you know? Right, right, right. Right now, Andrew, the medal count goes Japan, China, Australia, France, South Korea, United States, Great Britain, Italy, Canada, and then Hong Kong coming in at number 10. That is tremendous because Hong Kong's population is incredibly small. Yeah. So, I, you know, one of my takeaways from all this, and first of all, you know, uh, I'm going to try to tune into the Olympics when I can, but I'm, I think Asians are just killing, like, pretty much, like, half the Olympic sports Asians can dominate at. Now, you know, and it, we're not, I'm not talking about only soccer and basketball. I think those sports, they're still harder for Asian teams to dominate right, at. Some of the team contact sports, but right? But weightlifting, fencing, shooting obviously asians are dominating that they won golds in that and by asians i mean asian countries and also asian athletes from other countries uh athletes of asian descent right, right? so now for a lot of these sports that require you know tons of intricacy focus tons of training um that asian people asian descendants are going to just be winning gold. Like, like you're talking just, about like archery, for example. Yeah, I, th I think so. I think Asians are just going to be racking up the gold medals. Yeah. And uh, I do notice that Japanese are breaking through in a lot of like uh, street skateboarding and stuff like mm. that. Oh, Andrew, you know what's another brand new field for this year, 2024, that I think a lot of Asians are going to win medals in? Break dancing. Wow. Yeah. Or like mixed Asians too, yeah. For sure. Yeah, anyway guys, let us know what you guys think of all the stuff going on right now in the comment section below. Like we said, Asian countries really being very dominant at the Olympics, specifically a lot of the East Asian countries. But there's actually a lot of Asian athletes even in the New World countries that are like really mixed, like America, Australia, Canada. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, France if you even nowadays is considered an immigrant country. If you look at who represents America in the badminton, badminton team, it's all Asian Americans. Yeah. <laughs> They're all Asian. So I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, those are the sports that Asians are dominating at right now. But I, mean, uh, I, did, I did see a tweet the other day that said, hey, America sent a bunch of athletes. All the swimmers are white. All the basketball players are black. And all the ping pong and badminton athletes are Asian. Mm. Interesting. Stereotypes. Anyways, guys, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you think about the Olympics. Is it fair? Did Japan get cheated? And are people treating Asian athletes with respect? Let me know. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.
Korean male athletes can earn exemption from an 18-month mandatory military service by securing a bronze medal or higher finish at the Olympics. He was so elated that he organized a selfie with the other medalists. If he had lost the bronze medal match, netizens joked he would be sent to military camp as soon as he lands in South Korea. No wonder he beat the Hong Kong team 4-0, because the military is biting his butt. Another joke, his doubles partner Shin Yu Bin used to be his dongsei, but after today, he would treat her like his ancestor. A netizen nicknamed the bronze medal match, Saving Private Lim. This meme was circulating on Chinese social media. On the left of the podium is North Korea, on the right is South Korea, and the two Chinese players are like the 38th parallel north. All jokes aside, the netizen concluded, this is what the Olympic spirit all about. You can see the struggles, the friendships, and the love among the athletes. Watching them play is the best antidote to our mundane lives. Even though the Hong Kong team didn't get a medal, they will be awarded close to $100,000 by the Hong Kong Jockey Club for coming in fourth place.